In the previous video, we had an introduction to the basal ganglia. We saw the classic direct and indirect pathways model, and how it has been successfully applied to movement disorders. It's now believed that there are multiple parallel loops running through the basal ganglia, originating from many different areas of the cortex. Loops originating from different areas of the cortex serve different functions. As well as motor loops from the motor cortices, we also have the loops which deal with what are known as executive functions, how we make decisions, which originate in the prefrontal cortex, and affective or emotional loops, which originate in the limbic areas of the cortex. The purpose of all these loops flowing through the basal ganglia is thought to be so that the basal ganglia can perform something called action selection. The brain is composed of many different subsystems, all operating in parallel. Many of these systems are all competing to gain control of the body at the same time. For example, circuits which control feeding behavior, circuits which control fear, etc. In order for an animal to function well, behaviors appropriate to the situation need to be selected, and inappropriate behaviors inhibited. This process is known as action selection. Informally, it is the problem of how do we decide what to do next. It's thought that the basal ganglia achieve this by inhibiting many of the loops which flow through it, inhibiting many areas of the cortex. When an action becomes appropriate, the basal ganglia removes the inhibition from the corresponding loop, unmasking its contribution and allowing that action to be carried out. Since the original direct and indirect pathways model, we've also discovered additional connections within the basal ganglia. Three of the most important are an excitatory pathway from the cortex to the subthalamic nucleus, known as the hyperdirect pathway, an excitatory pathway from the subthalamic nucleus to the globus pallidus externa, and additional inhibitory connections from the globus pallidus externa to the substantia nigra pars reticularis and globus pallidus interna. There are a number of new models to explain these new functions and anatomical connections, and in this video I will outline my favorite one, the model proposed by Gurney et al. Each loop has a value known as its salience. This is effectively its relevance to the current situation. Appropriate behaviors will have high salience values, and inappropriate ones will have lower salience values. It is thought that the level of activation of each competing loop reflects its salience. The competing loops all project an input to the striatum. The direct and indirect pathways from the previous model are replaced by the selection and control pathways. In the selection pathway, inputs from the cortex excite the striatum, which inhibit the corresponding neurons in the globus pallidus interna and substantia nigra pars reticularis, reducing their inhibition of the corresponding neurons in the thalamus allowing this loop to excite the cortex. The inputs from the cortex also excite neurons in the subthalamic nucleus, which excite the inhibitory neurons of other loops in the globus pallidus interna and substantia nigra pars reticularis. In this way, each loop projects an input into the striatum, which acts to inhibit its corresponding inhibitory output neurons, and also projects an input to the subthalamic nucleus, which acts to excite the inhibitory output neurons of other loops. For example, Let's say we have three competing loops, with the middle loop connecting cortical areas most relevant to the current situation. As it has the greatest salience, its neurons are firing at the greatest rate. These connect through excitatory connections to the input unit of the basal ganglia, the striatum, and through the hyperdirect pathway to the subthalamic nucleus. The firing rates are preserved, and the middle loop still has the greatest firing rate. The striatum then connects through inhibitory connections to the output nuclei of the basal ganglia, the globus pallidus interna and substantia nigra pars reticularis. As the middle loop has the greatest firing rate, it is therefore able to inhibit its output nuclei most strongly. The subthalamic nucleus then projects diffusely to all the output nuclei. Again, as the middle loop has the strongest activation, it is also able to excite the output nuclei of the competing loops most strongly. The firing patterns of the output nuclei are therefore reversed, and the middle loop has the lowest firing rate. This means the inhibition to the thalamus is reduced and the thalamus is able to excite the cortex corresponding to the middle loop, and the appropriate action is selected. In contrast, the other loops still maintain high levels of activity in their output nuclei, leading to a high level of inhibition in the thalamus and preventing their loops from activating the respective areas of the cortex. As we can see, the selection pathway seems to work fine. Then what's the purpose of the control pathway? Let's focus on the subthalamic nucleus and globus pallidus interna of one loop, whose activation is suitable for the current situation. Now, as we add more and more loops in our model, there is still only one inhibitory input. However, the number of excitatory inputs keeps increasing. Eventually, the inhibitory input won't be enough to prevent the cell from firing, no matter how strongly the salient loop is activated, and its action won't be selected. In order to prevent this happening, 
the control pathways needed to balance the level of excitation and inhibition. In the control pathway, the cortex again excites the striatum. The striatum then inhibits the globus pallidus externa, and the globus pallidus externa in turn inhibits the subthalamic nucleus and the substantia nigra pars reticularis. However, the globus pallidus externa also receives diffuse excitation from the subthalamic nucleus. Now we can see that as more loops are added, there is also increased activation of the inhibitory neurons in the globus pallidus externa, which act to inhibit the subthalamic nucleus and globus pallidus interna, preventing this runaway excitation. In conclusion, the basal ganglia are a collection of subcortical nuclei. One of their principal roles is thought to be in action selection. The basal ganglia inhibit brain circuits inappropriate to the situation and allow activation of appropriate ones. One proposed mechanism for this is that each cortical area sends a loop through the basal ganglia and they each compete to reduce the inhibition placed on themselves and increase the inhibition placed on the other loops. This ensures that the most salient action is selected and an appropriate behaviour is performed.